Is you that, want this hat? Do you like that hat? You like it? Do you like it? What you do you think? like it. Here, you put it on. Do you want to put on the hat? You. Oh, you like it forwards or backwards? Do you like it like that? <laughs> <laughs> do you like that hat? <laughs> <laughs> What's up everyone, Ben with the BTC Sessions here, and this is your daily session. Hodl that Bitcoin. Before we jump in, of course, shout out to sponsors of the show, Ledin.io. This is where you can use your Bitcoin for a couple of different things. The first of which is a Bitcoin savings account where you can get paid out Bitcoin on your Bitcoin in interest. Uh, and the second is to secure a Canadian or US dollar loan using your Bitcoin as collateral. So if you want to check out either of those, you can click the link down below. And if you opt to get a loan, they'll actually credit your account with an additional $50 worth of Bitcoin. And secondly, if you're into Bitcoin, then of course, privacy is an important thing. And one of the things I use on both my phone and my computer is NordVPN. So Nord, it helps hide your IP address, it encrypts your browsing data, and it has the added benefit of being able to unlock geo-blocked content, amongst other things. And if you click the link down below, they've got a deal on where you can get the service for three bucks a month. So not too bad. With that, let's dive into the news. Uh, so this article out of Coin Telegraph I quite like, um, and it's in line with a, a study I saw um, and a theory that I saw, a f I think a couple months back. But essentially, they're saying that every Bitcoin holder within 1,335 days, regardless of at what point and what peak you bought, you will be in profit or up to this point that has rang true. Um, and so that is that correlates to about three years and eight months. Um, and that's assuming that you had bought the absolute peak of the 2013 run. That's the longest amount of time anybody's had to wait to make turn a profit. However, if you bought at different points in Bitcoin's history, then you had to wait far less. Um, so it says missing the peak of a rally would have resulted in substantially reduced wait for a profit. Holding Bitcoin for 317 days would have given a 75% chance of profit. So if you're patient and you wait, then your chance of profit up to this point has been about 75%. Um, and if you held for only 35 days, you had a 60% chance of being in profit. Um, yeah, so I mean, overall, uh, essentially, if, if you're a patient person and you've held Bitcoin for a decent length of time, more than a few months, you're likely in profit. Um, now, the report that I saw, this uh, it seemed to correlate quite a bit when it came to uh, the reward having. So the decrease in issuance of new coins, that happens every four years. So the halving is coming up in May of 2020, so this coming year, and that will decrease the amount of issued Bitcoin every 10 minutes from 12.5 to 6.25 coins every 10 minutes roughly. Um, and yeah, so that does obviously have an effect on price, assuming that um, usage either remains the same or continues to rise, then price will follow suit. Of course, if we saw a mass exodus of people using Bitcoin over the long term, then of course, the price would in turn go down. But uh, it was designed more or less to kind of have these bumps in adoption. And that's why we see these kind of crazy price spikes, because issues issuance is not super fluid. It's very predictable and does not deviate from its given trajectory. It's it's just known how much is being issued and when. Um, so we're going to move on here in relation to the ETF, the Bitcoin ETFs that have been on the table. Now, I mean, this, this has been going on for a long time now. Um, 2016, we saw applications to get ETFs approved. We saw some first, some of the first denials in early 2017, um, and it's just been going on and on and on. I think most Bitcoiners are pretty, pretty disillusioned, um, and half of them don't even care if it gets approved at this point. Really, Bitcoin doesn't need ETFs, um, but 
when they are on the table for for U.S. institutions, then of course that will increase demand over time. Um, so this the SEC chair uh, has said that there is still work left to be done when it comes to these institutions that are trying to get ETFs approved, um, and to me this just kind of sounds like we're going to be waiting longer. Um, there's a couple ETFs on the docket that are up for approval or denial in October, I believe the 13th and the 18th of October. Um, so here's a quote here. Uh, an even harder question, given that they trade on largely unregulated exchanges, is how can we be sure that those prices aren't subject to significant manipulation? People needed to answer these hard questions for us to be comfortable that this was the appropriate kind of product. Um, and so Bitwise, one of the people, one of the institutions that is trying to get ETFs approved, they did come out with a, a, a pretty good report on how stable Bitcoin actually is and how unmanipulated it is when you look to actual good regulated exchanges. And they said there were about 10 of them that they really kind of put on this pedestal and said, this is what a good exchange looks like. And the metrics provided by those exchanges were pretty consistent across the board. It's only when you deviate into these small shadier exchanges that you start to get really skewed numbers that can be manipulated and that have wash trade and other things that are just not allowed in U.S. markets. So um, it, I guess in closing, honestly, I, I think that the SEC seems to be still looking at the shady exchanges, which how do you get rid of those on a global scale? They're all always going to kind of be there. To me, it kind of seems like they're waiting on those reputable exchanges to be so widely used and has so much volume that it kind of dwarfs what these shadier exchanges are actually doing. Um, and honestly, it's not at that point yet. So I, I guess we'll really just have to see. Uh, but my guess would be that in October, we get a couple more denials of ETFs. Um, in the meantime, however, uh, what was it? It was Vanek. Uh, yeah, Vanek has now started offering um, kind of a, a accredited uh, investor type offering um, to kind of hold over uh, until then. Um, so it's not available to retail. It kind of mirrors what GBTC does, um, where institutionals can get in, um, but the average investor cannot. The difference with GBTC um, is that Afterwards, anybody can come in and buy off of people that have originally bought shares of that, whereas I believe with the Vanek one, people cannot do that. So it's actually a little bit more restrictive than GPTC. Moving on, we were talking about hash rate last week on the show and... I mean, no surprise, it continues to go up. We're like a, a sliver from getting to 100 100 quintillion uh, hashes per second. Um, so 100, is it 100,000 terahash per second? Um, so pretty crazy. The network just con continues to grow. So th the hash rate is a measure of how much computing power is actually securing the network. And the more that goes up, the more likely it is that your transaction is essentially etched in time and much more difficult to change. And this is particularly useful when comparing against other coins that use the same proof of work algorithm um, so that they cannot be compromised by other other people mining other chains coming in and trying to mess with the history of Bitcoin. Very, very unlikely. Whereas chains that have smaller amounts of hashing power, which is every other chain that are on proof of work could easily be gamed by some people switching over. So, so Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, um, chains like that that are relying on the same algorithm uh, are potentially susceptible to 51% attacks quite easily from Bitcoin miners. Now, the question is whether Bitcoin miners want to waste their time sabotaging another chain when they could just be making profit on the Bitcoin chain. And so far, the answer seems to be no. Nobody wants to bother with it. Um, 
but that may not always be the case. I guess we will see. Um, and so uh, the last thing I wanted to mention, and I've kind of given a shout out to this, uh, we got in the new bull Bitcoin merch and it looks awesome. So we've got the new, I actually really like the design of this hat. So that's the new bull Bitcoin hat. It's, it's limited. So there's going to be a short run of these kind of in and around the Baltic Honey Badger Riga event. Um, they are available to order for anybody. Uh, but if you're going to the event, then you can actually place an order and have your shipping as just pick up at the event. Um, so that's the bull Bitcoin hat. I really love the actual, actual Baltic Honey Badger logo that we put on the, the hat here. And then the shirts are really awesome. Right there. I actually really, really enjoy that. And the back, pretty awesome. So um, yeah, so I'm super stoked about the new uh, Bitcoin outlet merch. If you haven't been to the Bitcoin outlet store, be sure to check it out. Um, there's all the new stuff here. And then of course, sticker packs and hoodies and all our other stuff. We've got the Hodlinot hats. There's a few of those left, the Hodlinot shirt, and then some of the original Bitcoin outlet merch from when it first launched. Um, yeah, so I guess I will leave that there, but super stoked about those hats. And if you're a speaker at Baltic Honey Badger, I believe everybody's getting a hat, which is awesome. Um, so I'm going to leave that there. Again, thank you guys very much for watching. Always happy to have you here. If you're new here, be sure to hit like, subscribe, and share. Always hit share. It's great to get more eyeballs on the videos. If you want to help the show in another way, of course, you can hit either of the sponsors that I mentioned at the beginning. So Ledin and Nord, those links again are down below. And if you really loved what you saw, you can drop me a lightning network tip at my tippin.me page. With that, I am out. Thank you guys. And I will see you tomorrow for your daily session.